and say hello to Sean Salisbury, who's just been through internet hell. <laughs> Mike, hey, Vin, Mike how are you, buddy? It's good to talk to you. I'm doing good. Great, great, great to talk to you, Mike. I appreciate you coming on, and we're having some good fun. I told him, I said, he may be as tough as anybody on quarterbacks, but they produce, and it's great to have you on. It's been too long, my friend. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. And, and obviously, I know you're well aware of this. Your uh, your comments after the Bears 49ers game uh, were very interesting to everybody out here. And so, you know, would, would love to hear a little bit of an, an, an expansive comment, if you will, on on where you're coming from with regard to not just Trey Lance, but but how you go about that that evaluation and how you came to to some of those conclusions. I think you have to start, you know, with Shannon uh, and John Lynch. You know, obviously, uh, I think the world of them. They, uh, I know they know what they're doing. Uh, that's they're beyond reproach, and in, in my opinion, um, so I was really excited to see Trey play. Uh, with all the things with Jimmy G. And then when I saw him play, I know that they've had him for a year, and it was just so hard for me to understand how he could play like that. I know he's being coached. I know all that stuff. Uh, you know, it was uh, very disappointing, to say the least. And, you know, they're such a good team. I'm excited for the 49ers. I think that they can win that, you know, division and, and be real good this year. And it was really... It was hard to watch him play, and I know that does happen, Sean. You know, you've seen quarterbacks in your career, right? You know, have a moment like that, and hopefully, that's all that is. But it was going good, and um, it, it just makes you wonder. Now, he's, hopefully, he can get past that and play well this next week. And if he doesn't, then they've got a dilemma on their hands. All right, Mike, your overall assessment of him, you've done some miracles with a lot of great players and have had some great players and, and have always been demanding on your quarterbacks, which is a good thing. If you had him in the meeting room this week, that's Trey Lance, what would you say to him? Well, I've had this happen to quarterbacks before, and uh, you know, you just have, if you can't deal with the stress of it, then you don't belong, and you just have to find in your heart how to deal with it. You've got to be down, beaten down so far, that you say that's enough, and you and you cannot shoot, you know. And I've had that happen to a lot of guys. It happened to Kurt, you know. It happened to Mark. It happened to a lot of people, you know. They they discard it, and you know they have a bad moment, so they come back and they play well. I don't know anything about his background. In other words, his his background isn't very extensive. I think where he was as a young player in college and where he is now, I think it's a it's a long trip. You know, a lot of guys have played a lot of snaps. I don't know that he has. And the transition is going to be more dramatic for him, certainly. His skill level, I haven't seen nothing to know what the skill level is. But just listening to what everybody said, I was really anticipating a, you know, more than what we saw, of course, in that game. So I don't know what he is. And uh, maybe he's one of those guys that's going to take a few years. But in the meantime, they've got a really good football team. So what do you do, right? So... Hopefully they can win while he develops and comes along. And if he doesn't, then I think they probably would need to make a change. Uh, Mike Martz with us here on 95.7 The Game. Coach, I think a lot of people listening, when, when you say uh, that, that you know what you watched against Chicago um, was, was not very good, I think a lot of people who watch the game with just fan eyes say, look, some good throws in the first half, game got sideways, rain got sideways, no, definitely not perfect, but not awful. And it sounds to me like you thought it was really bad. What What are the specifics that you saw that were so concerning? Well, I just he just did some things he just can't do. You know, I mean, he was very slow, but to, and you know, he done things down for him a little bit and he missed throws he shouldn't miss. And and I don't care about the rain. You know, you, you think he's the first guy to play in the rain and throw the football. You know, I mean, that doesn't. That doesn't fly with me. Wind and rain, you, you still play and you play good. That's the way it goes. But um, I just was—I just thought I'd see more out of him. Uh, he's been sitting in the wings now for a year. I thought he would play a lot better than what he did. And, and hopefully this next week he, he'll do that. I don't know. But like I said, they've through their eyes, they've seen him every day for over a year. And, and I'll, I'm sure that they're confident with him. And that's fine. I just hopefully he he comes to that point here in the next week or two where He's who they, you know, hope he'd be. 
Mike, give me two or three. When you're evaluating these guys, which you've done for so long, what, what, give me th- two or three traits when you want a quarterback that not a not a, not a regular season quarterback, a guy who's going to take you where do you want to go where you've been in the Super Bowl. So with Trey Lance, so, give me two or three traits you have to have in a quarterback to win. Well, the first one, Sean, is accuracy. You just can't miss. Bernie Zampi told me when I first came in the league, I said, how do you, how do you value quarterbacks? Do they throw it straight? You know, they just, right. guys are really good ones. They don't miss. You know, it's very seldom do they miss. They can put the ball wherever they want. I don't know that he has that. I don't know. I haven't seen enough of them. And then the other thing is the ability to see, and Sean, you'll know this, to see and react quickly without having to think about your throws. So, you know, just flashes, the ball's out. Boom. And if you have to think about what you're seeing, then you're late right. with the ball. And right. He certainly is late with the ball to me, and not real accurate, he's, and he's late with the ball. The other thing is there's a mental toughness and a physical toughness that goes with that, that you can you can fight through these kinds of things and come back out on top and play well. You know, in Kurt's first start for us against Baltimore, he threw three picks in the first half. He came back and was brilliant in the second half. That's when I knew we had one, you know. And hopefully Trey can do that, but I just – you know, it's unfair for me, really, to because I don't see him every day to know what he is as a passer. All I know is what I saw in that game, and it was very concerning to me. Mike, I wonder if you can speak to just being the head coach of a situation like this. Maybe you can't because we've never seen a situation like this where you, you know, you <clears throat> excuse me, you put a presence like Garoppolo on the sideline and, and and then watch a young guy go. You said earlier, if if Trey doesn't play well here in the next few weeks, they've got a dilemma on their hands. How long before this is a dilemma? Like, how long would you let this go before you feel like you got to do something about it? It's pretty easy. I think if he's a reason, if you're not winning and and he's not getting enough out of that position, then you're forced to make a change. I think you know they know that um, because you got a good football team. You know, if they're Jets or the Jaguars, someplace like that, you know, it's a whole different banana. You know, you can be patient with them and develop them because you're. They're bringing the whole team along. They're all growing, so to speak. But that's not the case here. This is a good football team. And you don't want to hold them hostage as he develops. And and perhaps he's going to be a great player in the future Hall of Famer. It certainly could happen. But it's it's one of those situations where he may have to sit for a while and learn the game a little bit better than what he does right now. And, you know, I hope here in the next week it just the light goes on for him and he plays really well. I really do. But it was very concerning. Yeah, Mike, I hear, you know, throughout this in in my career and doing this and you doing it and playing, every there's people who will always say, well, you owe it to a guy to clear the room and let him learn without looking over his shoulder. I'm not in the feel-good business. I'm in the business of winning games. So if you can't handle competition in the room, then you're probably not the guy for me. And I'm not just talking Trey Lance. I'm talking anybody. So with that in with that in mind, with Jimmy in the room, is it more I got to worry about the quarterback's feelings or I should take into account the 52 other cats in the room? Well, I understand your question. I think uh, in that position, you don't belong there if you can't deal with that. You know, uh, playing under that type of pressure is what it's all about. You have to be the toughest, most competitive guy on the sideline next to the head coach. And if you can't deal with that, then you really don't belong to have that job. You shouldn't have it. And you, in a lot of the cases, I think, Sean, you, you develop a callus for it. And but that there's an inner confidence uh, and a belief in yourself that takes over at some point, and you just don't worry about that stuff. If you don't have that, that means in, in tough situations, uh, you know, the NFC Championship, or, you know, you spit the bit. you, you got to find out. You know, you just got to know whether you can, you know, owe up to that and, and deal with it. You know, and you know that as a quarterback, you, I'm sure you've been in that situation all those years right. that you played. You played at a very high level. You understand that pressure. Mike Martz with us here on 95.7 The Game. Coach, I I truly, genuinely want to know where you're at on this because as I hear you talk about Trey Lance now, it feels like you didn't like Chicago, but you're sort of wait-and-see mode and you you have trust in Kyle Shanahan, but your statement the other day was, I don't like him, I've never liked him. So, like, is right? Like, is is, is that how you feel? Yeah, I mean, I I watched him coming out, didn't I mean, there's nothing that, that I saw in him that relates to the NFL at that position. And uh, But like I said, I'm limited in what I've seen, so I, I get all that. Uh, they've seen him. They know. They've got all the information. And 
that trust Kyle and his ability, and, and certainly John Lynch, who's beyond reproach in my book. So they know more than I do about it. But from my observation, yeah, I don't get it. Just don't get it. And maybe they're going to change what they do on offense uh, to fit him. That certainly is a possibility. But, um, you know, in the meantime, you got to win games. You know, that's that's the bottom line. And, and I know this. When I turn a game on in the past, when I turn the TV on, the team I want to watch, I want to watch the Chargers, and I want to watch the 49ers. I, I just love what they do. And Shanahan is ahead of the curve offensively with how he does things. And, you know, so when this happened, like a lot of people, I think I was really disappointed. Mike, who gives them the oh, best by the chance? Way, and, excuse yeah. me, and, and the Bears are not very good now. They're just not good. Right, teams. right, right. Now they're, now, they're doing a good job of coaching. But personnel-wise, when you go to the roster guys, they're, they're not very good. And so to go back there and stumble around against that team... And they just, uh, the four downs look like to me that in the second half they lost hard a little, but they just couldn't, you know, they just couldn't move the ball. Who gives them a better chance to win between, I mean, in 2022, Mike? Is it Garoppolo or Trey Lance, in your opinion? I think that still remains to be seen. I think you got to give the young man a few more weeks here to see where he is and, and how the team plays with him. But there'll come a point where if, he, if he's not growing, if he's not getting better, if they're not winning, then. You know, it's, that's a, it's a tough situation. It's so unique in this league where they are. You know, it's it's just like Herbert. His rookie year, he comes off the bench and catches fire. And you'd like to see a first-round pick do that kind of thing. But they're all different. And they all they all get to that point, you know, the, the best they can be, so to speak, at different speeds. You know, they just do. They're all different. So perhaps, perhaps this is going to take a little bit longer and develop. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to you know, the next week or two are critical weeks for him. And Mike, remove Trey Lance from this for a second. I, I don't think I've ever heard your evaluation while Jimmy was the starter. How do you feel about him? What's your evaluation of Jimmy Garoppolo? I love Jimmy. I'd love to have him. I'd love to coach him. Um, I hear all he does is win. I mean, that's what you do at quarterback, right? You know, I hear so much about what he can do. I, I see him do a lot. I mean, look at his numbers. I compare his numbers to anybody in the league, really. So, um, and I, I don't know what the situation between him and the coaches or I don't, I don't know. It's none of my business to be honest with you, but I, I like watching him play. Uh, he gets the ball out quick. He sees things, uh, very, very well. Uh, I like watching. Uh, Mike, I, I, I mean, it, it sounds to me and I, you've, you've been very clear, like you're, you're not here. You're not watching all the practices, obviously. And you've got a lot of trust in, in, in Kyle and John, but the the evaluation of Jimmy and the evaluation of Trey, I mean, is it fair to say that that you think they made a mistake or that you would not have done the same thing? I can't answer that because I don't know Trey. I just don't know him. And, and Sean, you'll know this, in practice, there's so many practice hours involved. He may have been just lights out all camp and they got in the game and spit the bit. You know, I mean, that could certainly have happened to me before with quarterback. So you just, it's not fair at this point to, to write him off. But, you know, I never really, I, I just never, because I haven't really seen a lot of him, but what I've seen, I was just never really impressed with the kid. But that doesn't mean I know what I'm doing with this, because I've never been around him. They, they have. Mike, for the next five years, you got one quarterback to lead any franchise that you're coaching. Who is it? Herbert. Ooh. Why? Why? Oh, I think he's the best there is right now. I think he's on his way to just being stupid good. <laughs> he's so accurate with the football. And he, you know that pressure we were talking about? Yep. He comes off the bench just in a heartbeat and is instantly good. That's, so, that's a, a toughness inside that very few guys have. And in his mind, he wants to be the best player in the history of the game. And those guys, he, I know he checks in early and goes home late. He, you know, the quarterback coach down there real well. He worked for me, uh, Shane Day. And just and, and Shane is telling me some of the things about the character of him. And he's a coach's dream in that respect. You know, he's a sponge. And he's just a, he, he lives next to the stadium so he can get to work quick. You know, I mean, but physically, he's 6'5". He can run. He can move. He sees things really well. But some of the throws he can make, there's just very few guys in the league that can make it's. You know, Aaron Rodgers, Brady, those kind of guys, Mahomes, those kinds of throws, you know, that he just, they're truly great ones have, and, and I think he has all that. So over Mahomes and Allen. 
Yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah. I just yeah. I think he's uh I think he's gonna be ridiculous. You know, he's and he was not on a good football team. I mean, let's face it. Right. You know, you look at uh, the offensive line they had defensively, I mean they're like the turnstiles out in the state front of the stadium. So it's you know, they've done all that work on, on defense in the off season and bolstered the defense and helped the offensive line that if they'll give them the pieces to help, I, there, you know, there's nothing this kid can't do. You know, I'm, and I, I understand Patrick Mahomes. I understand, you know, the, the other guys and all that, but this is a young player who's got just a huge future ahead of him. Uh, coach, I, I can't wait till tonight, Mark. Yeah, I, no, I, this, I can't. I cannot wait. Till <laughs> this tonight. one is really about can't. as good as it gets. Uh, coach, thank you. Yes, yeah, th- thank you so much for coming on. Mike, great to talk to you. Mike, I'll drop you a message this week. Always great to hear from you, brother. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sean. Take care. You bet. Uh, All right, there he goes. Mike Martz, and we need to work through some of the things he said for sure.